Welcome to 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, where we take random movies from Metacritic's 15K Plus Movies to randomly watch whether we like it or not. Hello and welcome to episode 36 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. This is Colin. This is Niall. And this is random movie number 12,571, Krull, from 1983. So it's got a meta score of 45 and a user score of 6.3, which probably lends itself to a cult classic. It's got mm-hmm. one hour, 56 minutes runtime, had a budget of 27 to $30 million, which is yeah, a lot. Quite for, surprising, isn't it? And then a box office of 16.9, so... Did a little bit of a, you know, a flop. A flop. I mean, they're a flop. Let's be honest. Yeah, it was Peter Yates's like last dig or attempt at a uh, directing a fantasy movie. He said it was. He actually, I think I was reading up today. It was. Uh, he hated it so much. He took like a two week or three week break in the middle of shooting this movie, <laughs> and all the special effects guys went and took a three week break as well. So, um, yeah, Peter Yates. He directed Bullet, which is Steve McQueen's, one of Steve McQueen's. Well, that is a classic. Yeah, top movies. Died in 2011, which is a shame. Um, Stanford Sherman wrote the, the script for this, who whose main claim to fame was Any Which Way We Can with uh, Orang- yeah. Orangutan and Clint Eastwood. So, it, it, It's a similarly complex script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Direction, orangutan pretends to drive car. Close up of <laughs> hairy foot on the pedal. Right turn, Clive. <laughs> yeah. Um, I read today uh, that Warner Brothers have got the remake of this and they only recently announced it in autumn of 2023 and J.J. Abrams. Oh, cool. Yeah, J.J. Abrams is going to direct. Well, that's the plan. Wow, okay. Um, why? Uh, I'm not saying that this doesn't need a do-over but to be honest from what i remember as a child versus what i'm looking at now (laughs) it doesn't hold up all that well plot wise well i was just going to wonder how you thought about it after because i don't remember seeing this as a kid or a teenager so oh I, i seen it four or five times when i was like 10 or 12 you know so it doesn't hold up because you can look back at star wars and go that's a great movie so when you watch this again you don't think it is it Star Wars is still a good movie. It's well directed. It's got a complex story. It's got nuance. This is two dimensional. Great for a ten year old. Yeah. Whole lot of swashbuckling, um, but a whole lot of it doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, Ken, I think you just mentioned swashbuckling. Then Ken Marshall, the actor who played Colwyn, based his sort of mm. character on Errol Flynn. Like oh, he, completely, yeah. Yeah, he uh, you can tell from when he cuts the rope and swings across. The <laughs> Needlessly. <fight>. Needlessly. <laughs> it's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm going to stab you up the ass. <laughs> or shoot you up the ass. That was one of the main things I was wor- like, just strangely curious about in this movie. It's like every one of them has swords and the aliens have laser beams. It's like, why don't you steal their guns and start make this a fair fight? Yeah, and they killed quite a few of them. So, you know, pick up their... Pikey sticks of laser death. Yeah. Uh, um, the summary is quite quite brief on Metacritic because A twenty four didn't read the summary or write the summary. <laughs> uh, a, uh, in a nutshell, a prince and a fellowship of companions set out to rescue his bride from a fortress of alien invaders who have arrived on their home planet, which basically is it in a nutshell. So, yeah, yeah. So. Um, it uh, it intro the start of the movie, lots of fucking trumpets from James Horner. Yeah, T- to be honest, I, the music itself and the sound effects, I kind of liked it. Um, a bit over the top, uh, but uh, like in the intro with the, with the space mantle flying through the cosmos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like the sound effects are quite interesting, even though in space you can't hear shit. But <laughs> yeah, um, looked like a big the, flying log. That's yeah. The, the, it's really let down by Thunderbird esque special effects. Um, like I, thirty million, I have no idea where the money went on the special effects. 
I thought, like, I, it, I, in fairness, I thought, like, in general, they made some good, like, a lot of it looks good, a lot of it doesn't, but the sets, the yeah. sets are amazing. Like the Oh, the sets are beautiful, and, yeah. and, and the choice of location, like, I, I think they filmed a lot in Italy, um, and mm, then the yeah. choice of mountain scenery, absolutely spectacular. So that piece is fantastic. But, but I think Pinewood, I think it was Pinewood Studios uh, at yeah. the time, weren't set up for a high special effects and there wasn't many studios doing stuff like star wars um there was just there was just one really uh and to contrast those two side by side it, it, it's a it's a tough one yeah it's a, um <laughs> i was kind of laughing at the start because i was just i was totally like it first of all the intro was very long <laughs> it just kept on going like it just kept on the names kept on rolling and the intro of the big flying log in space kept on going and the trumpets just kept on blaring space my ears log. out space log two <laughs> the return <laughs> this time it's a christmas yuletide log now um there was a lot of vocal screaming going on and it kept on getting higher and it just reminded me of the outro of airplane when <laughs> when the voices just scream out of tune at the end just like totally like that uh, yeah. obviously james horner wrote a lot of great scores i just don't think he was he was learning his learning the ropes here i guess yeah yeah he went a bit too epic yeah and of course uh, what time what when did star wars come out 79 i think it was 77 oh i could be wrong here uh this was the same year as um revenge or return of the jedi or one of them anyway okay the um but this this was a few years after the first right 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 yeah so yeah definitely it was star wars intro like the big ship flying oh, yeah. by oh yeah yeah all right so we get into it and we get into the whole this is colwyn's castle with his dad there and they're talking about right we have to have this marriage son Oh no, it's a daughter no, it was, actually. It was sorry, it's a daughter. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah because Colin Lisa, comes. Space Lisa, or whatever you want to call her. Lisa. And straight off the bat, it's totally obvious that her voice is dubbed. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it, it's, it's a bit rough. All right. Yeah, so I read and, into and, it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I read into it today, and her voice was dubbed by a woman called Lindsay, Lindsay <laughs> Krauss. But um, they wanted an, uh, an American looking woman. Oh, so they. God, really? Lysette Anthony is the actress for Lysa, and then, then he. Why wouldn't they just use her her actual voice? It's like Hercules in New York all over again. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody in this one has um has British accents. Yeah, but it's it's you know it, it's cruel. They don't all have to sound British unless uh, that's how space people sound. I think that's what space people sound like. I think that's that's the general gist of it. You know, Jean Luc Picard. Come on. Yeah, yeah, with his French accent. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yes, it's Princess Lysa. She's at home in her little castle with her dad, and she and her dad's going. Yeah, we have to have this marriage, blah blah blah. And she's like all up for it. She loves him and all. She loves Colwyn. And uh, where is he? See, blah blah blah. But that kind of annoyed me straight off the bat um, because in you know Star Wars, there's a romance obviously in that, um, but. It's not handed on a plate. And this is like, oh, yeah, we love each other. Like, oh, okay, cool. True. You're not going to work for it. Yeah. True. Like, it's not like um, the wind and the lion sort of relationship between Sean yeah, and Yeah, you know, yeah. it has to build up and a bit of mistrust and a bit of, you know, fighting, effectively, and then a relationship grows. There's no relationship growth in this. It's just, there he is. Hey, we're in love. Yeah, he shows up late, and there's a little bit of aggro between the two dads, but they're agreeing to the single kingdom against the Slayers. When Great did band. Slayer? Yeah, when did they name it after this movie, Slayer? Because they came out pretty quickly after this Slayer. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Anyway, so they have their marriage where, um, yeah, something about water and fire, which comes back to, into the I final call it scene. the uh, the Bunsen burner of matrimony. I think that's what it was called. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so water into fire, fire into water. She takes fire, blah, blah, blah. Something to do with fire. Remember that for the final scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's such a weak-ass um, plot device, which will make more sense later on. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Maybe. It's still weird. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, Slayer's Attack, they're weird, black-horned... 
And obviously, is these space monsters from another galaxy slash, I don't know, system um, turn up on horses? Oh, yeah. Horses are the modus operandi here for moving around. Yeah, cruel. So, so, you know, they, they got there on a flying mountain slash log. And then they're like, oh, horses, we'll ride around on those. Yeah, they have lasers, <laughs> laser sticks. And so, like, where's their mode of transport? <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Uh, uh, but, okay. Uh, they wanted to be a Lord of the Rings type-esque thing. So. I, I'd read somewhere that was that was the original plan. It was going to be more medieval than sci-fi. But they, they kept changing the script and it just got so muddy. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that really annoyed me, so these Slayers attack, it's, they're actually pretty, they're well shot. Whenever they're on screen, mm. they're kind of shot in an eerie way, and I kind of digged that a little bit. Um, but they come in and they start fighting, and it's just, it's in slow motion. They're moving so slowly. And yeah, everybody. There's no, there's no um, like, these are space monsters, and surely if they had any chance of winning this, they should be able to jump around the place. And so I think the biggest problem was that their armor was so rigid yeah <laughs> and yeah. The, the actors who were playing them just couldn't jump around the place no they're so like you say okay they they come in on horses and they get off the horses i don't know how they got off the horses with the suits of armor i would do, do what i had to just fall off <laughs> 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 wait wait one second wait. i need to fall off my horse and get you yeah. <laughs> all right they're falling off their horses let's get them they can't get up um <laughs> uh, yeah in fairness, they also they also were quite easy to kill <laughs> Well, yeah, they I, snack them I'm over the sure head. Like Fifty lads with crossbows would have ended the whole thing. Yeah, some some long range weapons wouldn't go amiss, but they have just all they have is swords and stuff. But like, I like the way when they die, like their little creature. Yeah, I I actually thought that was quite well animated. Well, it's 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 practical effects, but yeah, it's practical. It's quite well done. Yeah, I thought it was good. You know, it's a little bit of sound effect, but it didn't really add anything to it because it didn't really come into like. There was no threat anymore. Like in one scene, one of the little critters goes down a hole. Burrows away. Yeah, and it's like, okay, so why? I, I, yeah, again, you could have dug into that and developed a little bit of lore and a bit of mythology around that and made that interesting. But... Yeah, like tremors. Like they become... Oh, yeah. <laughs> space tremors. Yeah. <laughs> Krull space tremors too. I'd watch the shit out of that. Yeah, well, I'll just watch tremors then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the slow motion aspect of it isn't actually, it's not meant to be in slow motion. It's just slow and it doesn't add any urgency or frantic pace to the thing. It's just like, it's literally, if you watch the scene, uh, Colwyn is just swinging his sword in slow motion. It's just so bizarre. Yeah. And every now and then, pff, swinging on a rope. <laughs> yeah, this is this Errol Flynn moment where he hops up. There's like 50 people dying around him. He says, okay, I think I should just swing across maybe two meters and <laughs> fall onto somebody. Up. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, both their dads die in the in the melee. Princess gets gets uh, kidnapped. The princess is in another castle. That sort of you know, yeah, that sort yeah. of thing gets sent away to the fortress. That's what it's called, right? The fortress, the the, the dark fortress or the black fortress or something to that effect. To be married to the beastie. Yeah, yeah, I like so like yeah. There's a lot of Slayer cin- cinematography that I liked. It was quite dark and menacing. But mm. once they got off the horses, it was pretty crap. They're pretty yeah. old. Yeah. yeah. They spent too much money on making stiff armor and then like, oh, crap. Uh, yeah. Thing. yeah. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, our, our protagonist, Colwyn, gets injured, uh, doesn't die, wakes up to a, to the seer. The old no, man. no, he wasn't the seer. Oh, the he old was, man, he was, sorry. He was the old man, a.k.a. Um, budget um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Budget, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I thought. He's Obi Wan. He knows everything. Um, yeah, we see him actually earlier on in the scene when he watches all the slayers ride by on horses. And like, he just oh, stares. Those lads are up to no good. Yeah, he turns around, looks past the camera, and we linger on his face like for longer than we should. It's just kind of <laughs> weird. Um, so yes, yeah, so he applies some. Uh, I think it's Mary Rose sauce to uh, Colwyn's wounds, which fixed him right up. I thought it was Tiger Bomb. <laughs> Anyway, One of those. Yeah, he mentions, all right, she's taken away to the beast in the fortress, so you're going to have to go, but you might need to get the glaive. Oh, yes, the glaive, which so is they, actually a glaive. So go and get the glaive. And so then they stay right to a big massive mountain. And 
I, there must be a two minute montage of him just him climbing up rocks to massive horn section from James Horner. And it's so long. <laughs> is James Horner? Um, yeah, like impressive climbing, but not very useful to the movie. Um, so long. Yeah, yeah. You know the thing. They, they, they'd paid a rock climber to do some impressive climbing, and they were getting their damn money. Oh, they had the budget, so yeah. So, but then, you know the weird thing is like. Right, three minutes of rock climbing, and then he just <laughs> dips his hand into lava and gets the cleave. That's it. <laughs> don't mind me. I don't need a little bit of lava. <laughs> I thought there might be like a beast or something, or like a critter in there. He had to, to, he had to fight or something, but nothing. No, hand in the lava, then dander down the mountain, uh, only to be told, now nah, you can't use it yet. Yeah, don't bother using it until you know you're going to, you, you have to use it. Uh, how many lives would, <laughs> yeah. would that advice have saved if he did if it wasn't given? <laughs> well, Robbie Coltrane popped his clog, so you know he should have. Oh, that's so disturbing. Robbie Coltrane's voice was dubbed too. Knowingly, he's not a, he's not a wizard. No, but Robbie Coltrane's voice was dubbed by Michael Elphick. You know who that he is? He wasn't. No, played Boone. Remember that TV detective? Why was his voice? Dubbed with Boone's voice. Because he was Scottish. You can't have a Scottish accent. Oh, why not? Because everything's in British accent, English accent. Yeah, but that's the thing. As you said, British accent. Like It's, it's not that far away. He's not like he's from Massachusetts. Well, they could have went up to Robbie in the first morning and go, Oh, yo, can you do an English like Somerset accent? I'm pretty sure he can. Yeah, I'm sure he bloody could. He did one for a Cracker, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you just toned down the Scott way down. Yeah, it turned it like, down. And that worked quite well. And I think Liam Neeson was also dubbed, was he? Or was that? No, I think he was. I that was his accent. I can remember that. I can pick that one out from a bloody ah. lineup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, obviously, I didn't. I don't remember Liam Neeson being when I was 10 or 11, but. No, it was his breakout role. <laughs> was it? I thought that was uh, Excalibur. I don't know. When, what year was that? Probably must have been after this one. Question. Um, I don't know. Uh, I do remember re-watching Excalibur. Because, again, there was another movie I thought was fantastic as a kid. And I actually quite liked it. And I made my wife watch it. And she thought it was the worst piece of crap she'd ever seen in her life. So, <laughs> All these movies you thought were great when you were a kid. I still stand by Excalibur. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, so during the movie, we get to we get to see certain scenes of the princess in this surreal surrounding of like being inside an eye or some just sort of. It's, hate it's very Geiger esque. Yeah, like, uh, it's exactly what it's very alien. Say. Yeah, and I looked. I thought maybe there was L- low budget Geiger. <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe there was some sort of hate or Geiger sort of production house involved, but now, um, yeah, but like it's it's creepy. It's I thought it was pretty creepy the way. The- I think, uh, to, to be honest, uh, if I didn't know how much was spent on it, I would have said that actually the, the, the scenes were quite good. Like the, 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 the design of it was quite effective. But uh, 30 million, maybe expect a little bit more of it being a bit creepier. But then the age it was based on possibly couldn't get as geigery. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we see that, and we go back to her during the movie, and she's in this sort of creepy uh, Geiger esque place, and that's fine. And the the beast talks to her and says, "You're going to be my wife." <laughs> it was like that scene from uh, League of Gentlemen. League of Gentlemen, you're my you're wife, my wife now. now. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, next scene is where they meet Coltrane, Neeson, and all as robbers, Lads. highway robbers. Oh, you're forgetting the sorcerer. He was neat. Oh, just like 10 seconds before. And uh, Ergo, yeah. Er- Ergo, the sorcerer. He's like, oh, I'm a ghost now. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> he's terrible. 15 seconds. 15 seconds later, I see a scene directly from the Yeast Lords. Oh, yeah. Cyclops there. Cyclops. Cyclops there. Yeah. Cyclops. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, and he just pops his head up and he's gone again. Yeah, he's a you know the he, the guy that plays the Cyclops, um, Bernard Breslau. He's he's the big dude that was in all those Carry On movies. Exactly, I was yeah. just going to say that. Yeah, he's less funny in this, <laughs> yeah. but a memorable character. It's quite uh, he is quite he is decent look to him. Quite a decent Cyclops look to him. 
there's a there's a, and there's a genuinely interesting relationship between himself and Ergo. Uh, basically, the only interesting relationship in the whole movie. Yeah, they. Um, yeah, how do they? They're sort of kind of buddies, but yeah. not. But a fleeting buddy relationship. Yeah, they have a few words together and seem to be on the same eye level. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so they meet the robbers and they go, "Hey, give us your money." And it's like, "No, we're on a we're on a mission here. You want to uh, join Alan, us?" Um, Armstrong, Robbie Coltrane, Liam Neeson. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, yeah, we're robbers. Uh, yeah, we'll join you. Okay. <laughs> off we go. We have our merry men, and let's let's head off. And then so they're like going, all right, let's go and see the, the old seer. Mm. Who, this was um, played by John Welsh. This was his last movie, actually. Oh, really? He popped his clog soon after. Yeah. Didn't well, see that one coming. Point. Hey, hey. <laughs> that's because uh, Saruman broke his seeing stone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they go and see him, and they try to see into this green gem thing, and the beast's claw crushes, which is quite a good scene. Uh, it is. Damn you, Saruman. <laughs> um, Sorry, Sauron. Right, so yeah, they're going through a swamp then, and slayers appear out of the uh, swampy mist, which is quite a good eerie scene. Yeah, it's actually... Especially the piece where they're coming out of the the, the lake, yeah. just rising straight up. Yeah, that's pretty. It's it's, cool. it's well it's well done. Yeah, uh, Robbie Coltrane's reaction and during the middle of the fight like, it was terrible. It just stood out for me. It was so stupid. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. He kind of does something and he looks, and he goes, "It's like, oh, good job, me, or something." It's just yeah, so stupid. Cheesy. Yeah, but it's pretty cool the way the Slayers die, and I was I was I kind of. Here, I write down here, Cyclops fixes everything. Because Cyclops is. he just uh, it always appears at the right time and saves somebody's life. Because he's already saved Ergo's life once already, I think, um, in a forest, randomly. He just pops up, kills a slayer, and then disappears again. Oh, and every yeah, now and yeah. then, he pops up, kills some guy, and then disappears again. So this, this swamp scene, he does it spectacularly again. Um and he seems to be the solution to a lot of their problems. Yeah, he's um, he's a strong character and kind of becomes part of the crew, but kind of is on the outsides of it, on the fringes of it as a sort of a superhero type character, type plot device yeah. who comes back to help them in the final furlong later. Oh, yes. Actually, the bit where he saves them is uh, the seer gets done in by a yeah. changeling who looks exactly like, now this was a creepy scene i, I found yeah it was uh, really well done but i didn't really know black, what's going on black first. eyes i didn't know what's going oh, on okay. first i had no clue yeah yeah so the, there's a there's two seers yeah one turns up his eyes actually open and they're black black uh and he does in the um the old seer chucks him in quicksand and Cyclops is dandering behind the lads from a distance, and he sees the seer's uh, old decaying corpse. Yeah. And he goes, oh, joy! <laughs> and legs it. <laughs> yeah. Although, like we have to mention that quicksand scene was actually probably the, one of the bit most oh, anxiety-inducing yeah, yeah, scenes yeah, yeah. of the thing. The, the, I read that they made that quicksand with a bunch of corks floating on water, and that's pretty. It's really well done. I thought that was a good, probably the best scene in the movie, to be honest with you, because it's kind of stressful and it brings up the uh, blood pressure a bit. And it does a bit, and you don't know who's going to die. I, I like the guy who, who who goes under. He 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 throws his bag of whatever the hell it is yeah. first before saving his own life, which not a great move. No, no, no. Yeah, so that was pretty good. Yeah, the quicksand scene. Then yeah, the seer versus seer thing and. Yeah, they the Cyclops comes and throws his trident type thing and kills the evil seer. They don't have any seers anymore. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, Cyclops for the win. Now I have to mention, Ergo turns into a, an extremely cute doggo. <sighs> <laughs> I love the dog. You're probably going to complain about it being too cutesy. Uh, it was fine. I just don't know why it happened. Oh, the boy never seen the dog, or he wanted a dog. Oh, I didn't catch that bit. So he does. He, said, he says it earlier on. I think all I want in life is a dog. <laughs> I probably 
erase that from my memory as being stupid line of script. <laughs> it was a particularly stupid line, but yeah. I did like the dog. Yeah. And um, the changeling that was good was really good. Well done. Um, before we, yeah, before the wizard turns into the dog, then they're going into the widow of the web, which is you know another you know what stage of Obi's, uh, another stage ex girlfriend. Along. What? Oh yeah, the <laughs> yeah the old guy's ex girlfriend. Um, yeah, it's just another sort of plot line, plot point through the uh, script to to get to before the final scene, which doesn't really last that long. The final scene, but we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, this whole spider thing and, and the widow of the web. Yeah, like it, it felt like filler to me. Um, I, like some of the special effects at the time were actually quite good. How they did the spider is, is I guess, like stopgap animation. It's very well done um, for its time. Yeah, it was but doesn't okay. I didn't really feel the effect of this scene. Like you know, this is where Obi Wan basically sacrifices his life to get information uh, as to where the tower is going to be the next day. Yeah. And it, well, it, it's not impactful for me. It's not like Obi-Wan dying fighting um, Darth Vader. No, it's probably because the old man really, I don't know, he didn't really, we didn't really get to know who he was or anything apart from the woman in the web going, you know, the widow of the web, not like, talking to him like they knew each other blah 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 but we don't really know him from other from the other dialogues so therefore his sort of sacrifice didn't really mean a lot to me and, and there's a lot of that in this movie to be honest like yeah. um, characters dying and me and i'm assuming you not caring because there's no development of some of them yeah. there's very little development even the main characters let's be honest um yeah well they could they could have like they could have got rid of a couple of scenes to develop the more, you know, discussions and conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I do complain about exposition being in movies too much, but this just completely just didn't bother with any of that. It just goes into scene after scene, set piece after set piece without really getting into the background of stuff. Yeah. Well, when this web thing is going on, the, the boys are, have s- magically got these women serving them food. <laughs> Oh yeah, it'd be something to do with Liam Neeson's wife or something. Uh, they just magically appear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so at the same yeah. time, um, Princess Lysa is up with the beast, and the beast is going, "Oh, look at your, look at your prince. He's with that lady down there." And then he's going to get jiggy with her. Yeah. Uh, he's she's like going, "No, that's not what's happening." And then she's another changeling, and so that happens. Yeah, that did happen. Oh, you know what was funny when just going back to when the Cyclops, the Cyclops, um, Cyclops there, the Cyclops threw the trident and killed the changeling. Why? If you look back at the movie, he's he's trying to pick it up, and he's yeah, the actor was obviously blind in the thing, so he kind of like has oh. to feel for it. <laughs> I missed that completely, but it would make perfect sense because he's got no eye holes. No, and the, obviously the Cyclops eye is just painted on yeah it was maybe i i maybe i just imagined it but i thought it was quite f- funny that he was like what do you want me to pick up something i can't see in the script what the <laughs> fuck's wrong with you people it's probably when the director was away on holiday it was like all right let's get on with it <laughs> that, that feels a bit right yeah so anyway the old man the old man is basically grabbed the sands of time because the old the, the widow of the web said well listen you can make it out of here if you you know, hold this, but when you let go of all the sands of time, you're a dead boy. You're, you're, you're brown, man. You're yeah. gone. So he makes it out, and it's whatever. It's is it is it a stressful scene? No, it's not as stressful as the quicksand scene. No, not even close. The spider sound effects was weird too. It kind of annoyed me. It's kind of like the Minecraft noises, like yeah. Minecraft <laughs> noises, Minecraft spider yeah. noises. Uh, so anyway, which the, is kind of annoying considering the amount of money that obviously it's spent on the spider. <laughs> yeah. And then not to spend the time getting proper sound to go with the spider itself. Twenty five million of the thirty <laughs> yeah. million budget. Twelve pound on the sound. <laughs> um, all right. Somebody then says, "All right, uh, yeah." She basically says, "Yeah, that's is where the fortress is. It's going to be there tomorrow. You have to get there before it pisses off again because it's a magical disappearing 
fortress. Obviously it is, because that's what fortresses do. Yeah. So I don't know. I can't remember which character says, yeah, we have to get the fire mares or what do you call them? Uh, I wrote down fire horses or Clivesdale's. Clivesdale's I, like that. I went, but I said Budweiser horses <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on fire. On fire. Again, like, you know, you know, it, it's it's not, it, I suppose it's kind of nearly Christmas, so it kind of makes sense. You stick a sleigh in the end of it and stick on a red hat. Yeah. Um, yeah, daft, this bit. Um, yeah. yeah. It was like, stupid. They were going supersonic, effectively, like... <laughs> Well, it was uh, just the whole wrangling of them. Just that set, like, and I read in the production that took forever. They had to, they shipped those horses all over, all across Europe by boat and truck to Italy, from England to Italy, and that must have taken them a lot of their budget too. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind, but it, it's up in like it's not the Alps, but it's one another another mountain range. I, I wrote it down somewhere. I can't see it now, but. It's not easy to get up there with a shed load of horses. Yeah, but especially those ones. Anyway, yeah. just like it was a bunch of, it took forever for them to wrangle them. Obviously, that's, yeah, they kind of have to. But again, all right, fine. Uh, they leave behind the Cyclops. It's like, you know, uh, they wrangle oh, them Oh, yeah, up. he says, it, it's my time. Yeah. And I'm going to die here because that's what I do. Each Otherwise, to its be Very painful. Each to each its, its fate. fate. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, could could have been a cinema history line if the movie was any good but you know it's it's met its own fate that line basically yep um yeah so they wrangle the horses uh, to be honest with you i thought the far away scenes of the fire horses were quite good it was quite when, they were, when, when they're running in a line it looks great but up close dear god oh yeah it's green screen all the way and it's terrible yeah, and there's, yeah. this is the pine wood screen or some lad sitting on a, a wooden horse effectively yeah and they've got like some blokes down below like holding up flames probably torches to i think it's actually two different um scenes that, i think they're that layered supposed to yeah 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 and it, and it looks it you know because if the flames are that close to you 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 kind of hurt the entire movie has situations where if the flames are that close to you you're in trouble yeah but yeah, the faraway scenes when the, the, the scenery is in darkness and they have this line of fire, you can barely see the horses. I thought that was quite good. Then they yeah. do like a whole bloody Christmas vacation, you know, Santa sleigh across the sky. Like It, it goes on a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down Rudolph here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it goes on a bit long. Um, like every scene, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So they show up in the fire horses. Uh, we're at the tower yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they start climbing up and the doors start opening slowly oh, here come the bad lads the bad lads the slayers are like holding laser up. sticks yeah they're they're, <laughs> they're aiming their laser sticks quite slowly up to their eyes to aim <laughs> just like everything else they do yeah and then of course Cyclops said nah I'm not gonna die yet. Cyclops fixes everything he says screw fate I, I never believed in it anyway and yeah. comes dandering along on his Rudolph horse and yeah. he's he's a saver. saves the day fixes yeah. everything well coltrane dies says yeah, something well, oh he says finish yeah, it yeah just like saving finish private it. rain again kind of Did nearly as poignant yeah <laughs> um so oh yeah so they, they're like all right i got up to the door the door's closing blah 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 because the mountain's about to disappear again so cyclops again saves the day and Holds the door open. Hold the door. Hold door. Hold door. Hold door. Yeah, and he gets nice and smushed for his uh, efforts. Yeah, but he doesn't like scream or cry out in pain or anything, which would have added a bit more, you know, emotion to the to the scene. It's just silence. Yeah, I, I think they were. I think they were trying to keep this PG, and it, it kind of takes some of the edge out of it, unfortunately, because that that should have been a a painful death and, a, and something that hurts because of what he'd said earlier. Because if he he said, you know. He, if he abandons his fate, then he will experience a pain worse than anything. And and he just goes, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, then Mr. Liam Neeson dies as well in the corridors of the and fortress. An, another dead Jedi. First to yeah. Budget OB now himself. He didn't get to say his line that was cut out of it. You have my princess. <laughs> <laughs> I will find her and I will kill you. No. no, yeah, he's he's, he's kind of a, nut, a nutting character in this as well. There's yeah. no impact in his death. Same as most of them. 
Yeah. Yeah, I kept on saying to myself, why don't they just pick up blades or sticks and start fighting back where it's, you know, it's even Steven. Anyway, for some reason, the corridor splits in half and <laughs> they get split up. Uh, the wizard turns into a tiger. And the... Yeah, why didn't he start with this? <laughs> yeah, why don't you just change into a tiger and just constantly... Just stay as a tiger for ages yeah. uh, and, and kill all the bad guys. Again, the um, slayers show themselves to be so fucking slow. It's so ridiculous. I, I did write down, at least at the start of this anyway, at least the slayers were substantially better shots than, say, your average storm trooper. <laughs> True, I guess. They, they actually got some kills. Yeah, but stormtroopers run. <laughs> yeah, they're faster, but crap. Yeah. Anyway, it's glaive time. Yeah, and I write down here, like, why, why, oh, why, has the glaive not been the whole way through this? Because it's awesome. Yeah. And the first thing he does is use it as an angle grinder. <laughs> yeah. Need in that door there. Choppy, choppy. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, I must go alone now, he says to the uh, other, to the, to, um, what's it, but, um, Torkel, Alan Armstrong. Yeah. And he's like, oh, like, I'd be like going, hang on a sec, you don't split up now, I just, Lost all my people. the end, god damn it. You're going to send me off here to die? Yeah. Thanks. So he uses the, he throws the glaive and it's like working away at grinding away at the princess's windows, for want of a better <laughs> not, word. Not a euphemism. <laughs> no. And um, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's angle grinding away and then the other, the other group fall through a wall in the other scene. Straight into sort of a Star Wars sort of trash compactor scene, but with yeah, spikes this time. So. Yeah, so they're stuck in there. One of them dies. Uh, we go back to the boomerang demolition. Uh, <laughs> kind of, get, I think it gets through. Then, and then he throws it and yeah, he chops the chops the door down. And, yeah, he um, kills some more slayers, and then we see the beasts. In yeah, and listen, the bits where he's killing the slayers with the glaives, awesome. Yeah, it's great. Just do it all the way, and you'll be fine. You'll be yeah. home dry. But uh, the beast is sort of there in the distance and vague, misty, sort of non Yeah, and his detail. size is kind of confusing. It's very confusing. Because <laughs> in some scenes, he's like, what, a couple hundred feet high, and then in other scenes, he goes up to pick up the glaive, and yeah. he's about man-sized. Yeah. It's so a bit... Ah, well, he's magic, so he's got all his power. So Princess uh, is going, yeah. hey, we need to get out of here. He's powerful in the center. And so he throws the glaive at the beast and it sticks in his chest and then the beast screams and falls to the yep. ground and obviously Colin wants to get his glaive back, his spiky boomerang, so... I, I would too. That's yeah, nice. yeah. It's awesome. But obviously he he can't get it out of there. It's embedded in there. So obviously just Wedged. like any other, yeah, classic movie trope, he goes to get it and the beast arises. No, he's not dead. He didn't double tap. No. Should have went in with the sword and stuck it in the guy's head. Yeah. But um, he's like going, or the princess is going, all right, let's get the hell out of here. It's whatever. Tag it. Yeah. yeah. The place is coming down or whatever. But the um, the beast, uh, they have to confront the beast, the beast again. And then, and then his wife-to-be says, it was never the glaive. It was always you. And then he goes, no, it was both of us. Give me your fire there, love. <laughs> Give us a light. <laughs> Give us a light. <laughs> yeah, and then suddenly his, his arm turns into a flamethrower, which is <laughs> awesome, but uh, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I said flamethrower hand, exclamation point. Yeah, uh, I, I wrote, well, I wrote down fire me arse, but <laughs> yeah, slash makes sense. Um, so that this is back to the weird plot device of instead of exchanging rings uh, they exchange flamethrower hands at the very start of the movie yeah. and the bunsen of matrimony uh, <laughs> yeah it's, you know a perfect plot comes around and finishes Makes, it off it's just perfect circle yeah now here's the deal so like when i was when i'm thinking about so he's flamethrowing the beast and the beast goes down he's dead fine whatever um yeah. that's the end of the movie kind of but um it's basically love beats evil, you know, tr classic trope. But also, the beast. No, is flame hands beats everything. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's like it's like rock paper scissors. <laughs> <laughs> the glaive wins most things, and the cyclops wins most things. But flame hand, I'm sorry, that's just yeah. win. Glaive, cyclops, flame throw. Flame hands. Hand. <laughs> yeah, let's make the rules for that and create a billion dollar game. Um, but anyway, at the, at the end of the day, the beast is kind of an incel. He's jealous of. 
um, marriage. He's jealous of the partnerships. He's not married. He's single. He's a single beast. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's in a fortress <laughs> of solitude. <laughs> he's just got these weird insect friends around him, uh, and that's all he's got. Yeah, he doesn't have She should have shown him some love, and now maybe he could have fixed the problem without all the killing. Well, he's like, all through the movie, he's pont pontificating at her what marriage and love is he hasn't got a clue he's been alone in his disappearing log cabin for the entire <laughs> for the entire movie and he doesn't have yeah. any clue how, how love works or how partnership works so then he says that's why he basically came to earth to find i want to know love. what love is <laughs> he didn't go to earth he went to crawl sorry yeah oh yeah sorry um, earth light or whatever it's called yeah, yeah. Cruel the reindeer horses. Actually, there was they. They said that the they didn't actually really like the name of Krull for the movie, so they got all the staff together to vote, and Krull still won. Christ. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they're leaving, and the whole fortress is falling apart, and they run along a bridge like Scooby Doo gang. <laughs> remember that? Bit? I did have a good chuckle in that. Oh, actually, on, on the there was a previous scene on on the bridge. Uh, the lads were Scooby Dooing across the other direction, and one guy gets killed. Oh yeah, yeah one yeah. random shot. Yeah, and it goes, and he falls off the side. Going, ah. yeah. I thought it was going to be. One. I wet myself. It was amazing. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the uh, the Wilhelm scream, but it wasn't. No, it's just the. Uh... Actually, I think they they reused screams or something from another movie. I read that today, and I can't remember the movie they used. Really? Wow. Yeah, because screams are expensive. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the the bloody fortress. They make it out onto a beautiful grass meadow, and the bloody fortress takes maybe five minutes for it to explode into Sod pieces. Off. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, and you know what? I thought the voiceover at the end was quite ominous because it said um, they were have a son, and Their then the sun shall, shall rule, rule the, galaxy. the galaxy. Yeah, it's like okay. Um, so is he going to be Darth Vader? And is he going to? That's be like, what I wrote down. Is he little baby Palpatine yeah. slash R E Yeast Lord? Just you get over <laughs> my East money's Lord on for... East Lord. I will never Cyclopses and ruling the galaxy. Goddamn East Lord. <laughs> it's probably where they so got QED, the... baby. That's it. It's probably it's where fact. they. It's probably where they got the idea from because it's become a cult classic. This movie, which I've never, yeah. I I haven't gotten bored that. I realized that Andrew, our listener in Australia. Put this in his top 10. I don't know when he last watched this movie, but I'm sure he's not going to be too happy with our scores at the end of this. But I probably can not. I can, I, I can see how it's cult. Um, yeah, 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 true. It, it was to me uh, up until watching it again. And, and I still have a special place for it in my heart. Um, in it's neck. like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's not nearly as good watching it now, but still, you know, it, it's. Well, I like watching it, even though I know it's kind of crap. Yeah. Well, I remember watching Jason on the Argonauts when I was a kid, you know, with the oh, yeah, animatronic yeah, yeah. animated Fantastic, skeletons. Yeah. I haven't watched it in many, many, many oh, it'd years. Oh, it would be just, just as bad as this was to me I in, bet the, in the rewatch. Be. Yeah, I yeah. bet it would be. But back then it was amazing. And this, for all its failures, would have looked amazing back in 1983. And I still think... Oh, it did. Trust yeah, me, it did. I think a lot of scenes in this still look good. I think the, the production is quite good with what it did in the, in the day and i think yeah. the sets especially the fortress interior sets are very um very the scary design was very good like yeah. and it was uh, i remember it being sort of a, a really creepy sort of like especially the beast sort of sniffing around in the background and the whole skyger-esque sort of <laughs> sniffing around <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's um, that's the, that's the end of the plot. It's over. They they are um, yeah, they're walking the along the meadow. Away. Yeah, yeah, they're walking along the meadow. Some of the good guys got away. Well, I'm guessing that could have like the best if they did well. Then the sun would have been the sequel, you know, but it didn't do well. Which is a shame. I was like, well, you wanted to see the East Lord as a movie. <laughs> well, watch bloody whatever the movie's called again. I can't remember. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite, other movie. <laughs> oh, so, um, yeah, I, I wanted us to talk about it because I didn't do my scores because I just wanted to go through there. So I'm just going to 
put my scores in now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So I'm going to give 1.5 for the plot. I... Yeah, it's, it's very weak and it doesn't explain yeah. a lot of stuff and things just pop up and they're just there because they're there. Uh, I give it 1.25. It, it's weak sauce. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, it's a cult movie is a cult movie for a reason. The general public probably will hate your cult movie while you love it for its in, yeah. for its weirdness and its failures and its weaknesses but all in sometimes all, the failures are part of the the magic mixture yeah uh i don't think the acting's too good either i think the the main characters one of them is dubbed so that's that ruins a lot of it yeah um, ken marshall plays call when he didn't do anything else he never fronted a movie ever again yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't spectacular. Um, yeah. I I liked Alwyn. What's his face? Um, the head of the thieves. I thought he was decent enough. Alan Armstrong. Yeah, that's that guy. Yeah, he was yeah, decent yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, anybody that's else? About it. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that that's pretty much it. It, it, it. And ergo, I wanted to like him, but no, he was kind of no. No, you know he's um he's Charlie's teacher in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Is he? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and Lisette Anthony was in Dracula Dead and Loving It. Do you haven't seen that? Leslie Nielsen. I've watched every Leslie Nielsen movie. <laughs> and but she also, she also she, Lisette Anthony was also in probably a couple of hundred of Hollyoaks episodes too. So that's that's not a good claim to fame. No, no, but at least she got some solid income, you know. She did. She did. Yeah. <laughs> the career didn't end after this. Yeah. I gave the acting 1.5. It just wasn't good. I, I gave it 1.5 as well. I, I watched this with my wife. She tried to convince me to bring it up to two, but um, oh, on, on the second discussion, I, I've got my scores and her scores down here. She agreed in the plot. She put down two for acting, but I'm, I, I'm overriding that because it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Soundtrack really... Every scene seemed to have a soaring soundtrack. Like somebody could have been licking a stamp on an envelope, and James <laughs> Horner would have like put a soaring up to eleven, yeah, soaring crescendo of horns and violins, and he would have but like listen. James Horner has done Titanic, Apollo thirteen, Field of Dreams, Aliens, Cocoon, Commando. He's useless, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, he's terrible. He died actually. So I didn't realize he died. When? Died in 2015. I did not know that. No, oh my God. no, it's. He, he's obviously he's produced some amazing soundtracks, uh, like like Aliens. Yeah, I guess so much in that that just sticks in my head as, yeah. as just amazing. Um, this isn't that, but uh, this is his early work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's fair play to him, but this is not good. I gave one point five as well for the soundtrack. Uh, I have two point five. Um, uh, there, there are some things that I quite like to. The music, uh, you are absolutely right. He, he doesn't turn it down at any point. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Yeah, not everything is epic. No. Um, I'm sticking with me because I thought the scenes that deserved it were well scored. Sure. So um, production is will be the highest one I give. I gave a 2.75. I thought for a 1983 movie, I think it's above average. Obviously, uh, things have aged but i think they shot things very smartly i thought the production was the, the set design was really good uh but i cannot forgive the fight sequences that <laughs> look like they're doing it in slow motion but they're not it's bad i i had originally written down three but as we talked about it i knocked it back to 2.5 um mostly around two well two things the 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 fire on his hand which really annoyed <laughs> the crap out of me the Good at a barbecue. Horses. Oh, very handy. Yeah. Char grill, everything. And yeah. then the Cyclops. Um, his, his eye not really moving or <laughs> focusing on anything just wrecks my head. <laughs> Struggling to pick up his trident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll stick with 2.5. Yeah. No, that's not the worst movie ever made. No. Like, it didn't annoy me. I, I 
I kind of looked at my watch a couple of times because it is one hour and 56 minutes and it really, I don't know if they cut it down to one hour 30 and, or use that one hour 56 to actually make us care about the characters. I think we'd be, we'd be well, that's at it. I, I, I think that would have made a much better movie. Chop a few, get rid of the bloody spider web scene. That's just me. Um, stick some exposition in there. Explain why people are doing stuff. Build a romance or a relationship between the characters. And then make us care when they die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because Coltrane dies, Liam Neeson dies, the seer dies. Yeah. The old man uh, dies. They cared very little about any of them. No, didn't really care. And then there was the boy who I just forgot he was there most of the time. Like he could have died now. We would have been like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's had a good life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For some reason, the tiger, we cut back to the tiger at the end and it's got bloody paw. It's like, when did you get injured? Missed that scene cut. Yeah. Um, David Anson in Newsweek gave it 30 out of 100 back in 1983. He said, The under the tone deaf direction of Peter Yates, Krull manages to be both lavishly overdone and bizarrely half baked. I, I agree with his sentiment. I think he's a bit harsh though in the, the score, but yeah, it, that sounds about right. Yeah. It, it's, it's, am, it's amazingly overly lavish in some scenes. And then some of it feels a bit, eh. Yeah, I'll just give one at the bottom again, because there's only like nine reviews on Metacritic. Uh, Ian Nathan from Empire Magazine gave it 40 out of 100. He said, uh, one of the dreariest outer space swashbucklers of all time. The highest mm. rating is Nick Shager in the AV Club. He gave it 67 out of 100. He said, if it's all... M- if it's all more than a bit silly, not to mention derivative, Krull manages to cast a fantastical spell courtesy of Peter Yates' direction. So he saw something there that we didn't. Maybe a 10, 11-year-old me seen as well. Uh, if you can get past the lack of plot, it's actually a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's stick a glaive in Krull and say we're done. All right, one last thing. Oh. Another annoyance. A glaive is a sword on the end of a bloody two meter stick. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's not a bloody glaive. No, that's a spiky boomerang. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure we could come up with a different name for it incorporating boomerang and spikes. Spikerang? Spikerang. Oh, there you go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> but it's not as short as a um, glaive. Mm. Glaive well, sounds more. Mysterious, not spiky boomerang. <laughs> Sp- yeah, Sprang. go forward and get the spiky do- boomerang of destiny. Sprang, sprang, nice. Spring has sprung with a sprang. <laughs> okay, all right. Cool. So um, we are going to uh, randomize for the next movie, and yeah, let's just do that right now and see what we get. We've had high numbers the last few weeks and we are getting it again oh, why is it constantly random why damn it, you randomness it's constantly just sticking up at the high numbers Thirteen thousand three hundred sixty. oh blimey like i don't understand like this i might have to change this app and just see if any other app gives us well it is random though but so but you know it's sort of weird Okay, well, this is random and weird, but movie number 13,368 is bizarrely Dumb and Dumber. I don't understand. It's got a... So Dumb and Dumber, the first one, not Dumb and Dumber, which is awful. When I saw the thumbnail, I thought it was Dumb and Dumber, but it's Dumb and Dumber. It's the 1994. that, 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 why is it down 13,000 and some? I don't know. It and, should be up in the top five. And even the, even the user score is not high either. So it's meta score of 41 and a user score of 6.0. Like I, this what? was, this was the first movie that I kind of nearly died laughing at <laughs> when I was a teenager. So I haven't watched it in nearly 10 years, but it's a, one of the movies that I constantly quote when I meet somebody who loves it as well. And yeah, I can't see this of having aged badly in the last 10 years. I don't think so. I can't wait to watch it and actually really review it. I think Dumb and Dumber is probably in my top 20 movies of all time. I, I, I think top 100 there. anyway. Um, it is a great movie and it's 
Like, it's stupid, but it's wonderfully stupid. I just can't believe it's that. Like, I really thought when I saw the thumbnail that it was going to be the sequel or the, the latest one or the one with the um, younger. Like, there's Dumb and Dumber 2, T-O-O, which is with them. But there's yeah, Dumb and Dumber. There's Dumb and Dumber, which, which I've, the I've, young ones. I've, I've seen. I haven't seen the Dumb and Dumber 2, but I have seen the young ones, which is awful. Yeah, I didn't want to watch Dumb and Dumber 2. I just wanted to it's remember nice. Dumb and Dumber as what it was, yeah. Um, well, this is a crazy. This is crazy. I don't know why. Happy days? I'm not, I'm not very don't, happy. Don't, don't, look, don't look a gift horse. Don't look a gift number in the match. It, it's ridiculous that it's so low, but it's also awesome. Yeah, it's great. And this is maybe the unit, the randomness gods have so, suddenly smiled at us coming up towards the end of the calendar. You're going, here, take this. It's a high number, but this is what it's Merry like. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Well, here's the thing. Like every week we pull a random number. The um, movies are added to Metacritic. So if we did this number last week, it wouldn't have been Dumb and Dumber because it would have been pushed around. So since we... Since we pulled the number last week, 20 movies have been added to Metacritic. So I obviously update the the movie numbers. And so, yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> one of my favorite movies well, of all time. Well, not one of un, my... Un, unlike the Cyclops, we won't um, laugh in the face of fate. We'll embrace our fate and review this one next. <laughs> That's what this whole project is about. This whole concept is about embracing the bad, the good, the coincidences, and... Weird and uh, weirdness, and there's, a, and there's a lot of bad. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bad, but we've come across some good gems. Bads. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, great. That is the end of episode thirty-six. We will see you in a much anticipated episode thirty-seven, where we'll review Dumb and Dumber and analyze it for its dumbness. Bye bye. Cheerio. Cheerio.